Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah, if you're new. I make a bunch of lifestyle, vlogs, fashion, wedding related content. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you subscribe and stick around. But today I really just wanted to sit down and chat with you guys, all things wedding. So I did make a video kind of similar a few weeks back. I will link it here if you haven't already seen it. That video kind of just went over all my visions, like what I want to accomplish with my wedding. So that is um, that if you want to go check it out. But today I put together a list of questions that um, you guys either asked or I think that you may want to know. So I'm going to go over all of those questions now. I have them all on my phone, so I'm just going to be reading them from there. But of course, if you guys have any other questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer them there or make a separate video about them. But let's just jump right on into the questions. The first question is if Frank is going to be involved. If you guys don't know, Frank is my dog. So uh, he is not going to be in the wedding. There is actually an option for him to stay on the property, um, which is really awesome if you want to have your dog in the wedding but I just thought it would be a little bit too much of a hassle and I don't want to really bother with it. Um, there are like animals, horses on the property and I just could imagine Frank going absolutely berserk the whole ceremony, the whole time he's there. So he is not going to physically be there, but we are going to incorporate Frank um, in the wedding by having a signature cocktail named after him. So. I thought that would be really fun to have a drink named the Frank. We don't know exactly what the drink's going to be yet, so um, that is still up for debate, but we are involving him with that. I saw other really cool ideas to involve your dog or your animals um, by having custom-made cocktail napkins or cups made, which that's such an awesome idea. Uh, they just are a little bit more on the pricey side, like 70-ish dollars to get that done, but I was looking into doing that. So instead, we just settled on having a signature cocktail named the Frank. Um, the next question is if we're gonna have signature cocktails, and I don't think we're going to, so most weddings have like a his and a hers cocktail, and I think we are just gonna stick to the Frank it just simplifies things and people like to pick their own drinks at the end of the day. So we're going to have one signature cocktail and that is it. The next question is how I'm doing my nails for the wedding. And I am going to be doing my nails almond shaped with the color OPI bubble bath. Just plain, simple, kind of like a nudie pink color on my nails and nothing more than that. I don't want to look back on my wedding day and be like, oh, why did I pick that color? Why did I do that design? Or anything like that. So sticking very simple, doing OPI bubble bath. Uh, the next question is how much am I DIYing? And honestly, you guys have seen all the DIYs. If you haven't already seen my other wedding video, check that one out. But I am making a lot of my signs, like all my um, guest book signs, my favor signs, uh, most things like that. I am going to be DIYing, but most of the things I really am just buying. Um, I made an invites video recently as well where I DIY'd my wedding invites. Um, I really bought them from a wedding website and then spruced them up by myself, which made a really, really cheap invite look super expensive and awesome. So if you haven't seen that video either, make sure you check it out if you're in the market to kind of make your wedding invites on the cheaper side. I think they turned out really, really awesome and I'm really happy with them. The next question is if my ceremony is unplugged or if I'm letting people be on their phones or cameras during the ceremony. And I feel really strongly about this one and I really want my ceremony to be unplugged. I want people to be focused, paying attention, and not um, having phones out. I don't know, it's <laughs> just a personal, pro a personal preference. But let me know how you feel about this one in the comments. Um, I really don't want cameras or phones in my pictures from my photographer either. I feel like it kind of um, makes the pictures just look a little bit less. I don't know. So that is my answer for that question. If you feel the same or differently, let me know down in the comments because I really want to know other people's opinions on this one. Um, my next question is if I'm doing a first look. 
and we have decided to do a first look I'm gonna do one with Matt and my bridesmaids after like I'm already I really love that picture where all your girls just like turn around at the same time and see you fully put together with your dress on for the first time and I think that's really cool as well and I think I also want to do one with my dad so yes we are doing first looks we were really um, going back and forth with this one because Matt wanted to be the first time seeing me when I walked down the aisle and I completely love that idea too but then we would have been doing all of our pictures during cocktail hour when all of our guests are there and I am paying so much money for this wedding that I really want to be able to enjoy the time that we have with our guests and since it's only a few hours that their guests are there, we decided to do our pictures and get that out of the way before everyone showed up. So once the ceremony is over, we can fully enjoy the rest of the night and not have to worry about, okay, we have to go to this part and get pictures of us and then break off into this group and do this. And I just felt like that was too much and I really, really just want to try to enjoy my day. So yes, we are doing a first look, but mainly just to get our pictures out of the way. Uh, the next question is if we are doing personal vows and we are and I think we decided like the other night <laughs> that um, made this decision but I think we're gonna do them when we do our first look to just each other instead of doing it during the ceremony it makes it just a little bit more personal and then we're not so nervous like telling our vows or speaking our vows in front of our whole uh, party like I just feel like it's a little bit more personal but our videographer will be there and capturing that moment so they will be in the wedding video when that comes out um but yeah so that is how we feel about vows i really did want to do personal vows i just feel like it makes it a little bit more special but we are between doing it during the ceremony and doing it just between us and we landed just doing it between us it will be a lot more special i think that way the next question is about flat lays so if you don't know what a flat lay is, it's the pictures that the photographer takes of like your rings and your some flowers or your shoes, your perfume, your um, ring boxes and stuff like that. It's just like what I'm doing and what I'm buying for my flat lays or what I'm going to bring for them. So I'm definitely going to bring my wedding shoes. Uh, the invites I made, I'm going to bring one all put together and one that is not all folded and put together. And then I'm also gonna bring some of the wax seals that I made. And I'm gonna buy a few ring boxes just off Amazon. You can also buy them off of Etsy um, and personalize them a little bit, but we are just going to stick to the unpersonalized ones for this. And then I also think I'm gonna buy some like chiffon or some sort of uh, material that I can fold and lay on the bottom and layer things on top. Um, I think I may also bring my perfume to get um, in the flat lays, but to be honest, my perfume bottle is not the prettiest bottle in the world, and I don't know if I want that in the flat lay. And I wish I thought of that before when I was buying my wedding perfume, um, but I didn't. That's my bad, <laughs> and there's really nothing I can do about that at this point, but oh well. Um, the next question is if we're doing a unity ceremony during... The ceremony like a unity i don't know a lot of people do the candles or the sand and i don't think we're gonna do that um one candles are just kind of iffy <laughs> for an outdoor ceremony so i don't want to like risk it and it not work and i don't know if you guys have any good ideas of unity uh ceremonies to do let me know because i'm actually interested to see if there are any that would like fit our wants or needs better i don't love the sand one and the candle <laughs> I feel like just might not work for um, an outdoor ceremony so as of right now we're not doing a unity ceremony um, which is not a necessary thing it's just a little part in your ceremony where it's a few words and you like light your candle or whatever but um, yeah I don't think as of right now we're doing one the next question is if I'm changing for the reception like changing dresses or anything like that I am not changing my dress I love my dress and I do not want um, to have to take it off or like switch dresses I paid a lot of money for that dress and I'm going to wear it the whole night but I am going to change my shoes I'm not gonna wear heels the whole night I just absolutely cannot do that so I'm going to change from my heels into Air Forces and change out the laces in them to be like fun and tool or something cool and that will be my reception shoe so I could dance and have more fun and not be like in pain the whole night in heels 
And the next question is actually where my wedding shoes are from. So I don't want to share my wedding shoe exactly, um, but they are from Dolce Vita. They're super cute. They look comfortable. I'm hoping all goes well. They're going to be coming in hopefully in a few weeks here. So my wedding shoe is awesome. It's so cute and it goes perfectly with my dress. So I'm very excited to get those in and see what they're all about. And I'm also trying to buy uh, shoes for the um rehearsal dinner and my shower and they've been out of order for so long and i'm just like waiting for them to come back in and hopefully i'm praying that i can get these shoes because they're so perfect um but yeah and i also bought this headband i want to share uh from amazon they had one at francesca's that i saw and i was like i want that so badly but it was like 30 bucks and I didn't want to spend 30 bucks, so I found this one off of Amazon. It's really cute, and I think I may wear this for my rehearsal. No, I may wear it for my bridal shower. So it's a possibility. We'll see how it, it, it looks. But um, the next question is, where's my venue and what's my favorite part about it? So my venue is in Purcellville, Virginia. It's an old barn, and it's just beautiful. My favorite part about it is... Uh, there's this stone barn on the property and it's so beautiful and old and vintage and it's perfect It is exactly what I was looking for in a venue and I'm just so excited um, There's a lot of different areas for guests to kind of spread out and Explore I guess there's gonna be two separate barns. The ceremony is gonna be outside There's a whole nother area for like field games like cornhole and bocce or there's like a bunch of different games there's also like horses and animals on the property it's just a really cool place and i feel like it's like a little hidden hole like it's so cool and i just think it's gonna be perfect so we're getting close to the end here actually uh the next question is what questions did i ask my ph photographer to know if she's the right fit so i talked about this a little bit in that last video as well but I didn't ask many questions. I more so had a lot of conversations and felt who I vibed with the best or like who had like a personal connection with. Um, I also did ask like their style and if it was more candid photos or more structured and posed photos because I do want a lot of candid real moments captured during my wedding, like during our vows and um, like with with my bridesmaids and just like fun candid photos and not necessarily ones where we're just standing and posing of course i want those ones too but i want it to capture like the real feeling of the day and not so much just like stand there and smile <laughs> which is awesome too if that's what you want that's awesome but i was looking for something that was more um personal and something i felt like would actually capture how i felt that day and I feel like a candid photographer would really do that justice. So I asked her a lot about that. And I asked about um, just like her style, what kind of pictures she liked to take, her um, color scheme type of thing. Uh, there's a bunch of different types of photographers. There's like moody or really bright and airy or like more true to life color photographers. So all that kind of stuff is important to figure out and talk to your photographer about so there's just there's so much <laughs> so, um the next question is if we're going on a honeymoon and yes we are going on a honeymoon um, we're going to greece so i'm so excited i think we did mention this before in a vlog um, but we're doing greece we're starting at athens for three nights doing mykonos for four nights and then to santorini for three nights and then we go back to athens for one more night just to fly out um but I am so excited. I've really never been out of the country too much. I went to Mexico recently for my bachelorette trip. If you have not seen that vlog, go check it out because it was so much fun. It was the best trip, more of a relaxing, just fun girls trip. And it was like the best weekend ever. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out. But besides that, I've been to the DR once and that's the only time I've ever been out of the country. So I'm really excited to go over to Europe, go check out Greece. It's been on my bucket list for a very very long time so i'm super excited to be able to go to greece for like 10 or so nights it's gonna be so much fun um the next question is what was the biggest part uh of my budget that i used so there's like three really really big chunks of <laughs> my budget and that's pretty much like the three um vendors 
is pretty much 90% of my budget and that was venue, photographer, and food. And I feel like those things are the three most important things at your wedding so it makes sense that they are the most expensive <laughs> but those are really 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 big chunks of my budget just all at once. So those three vendors were definitely definitely the most expensive and the biggest like parts which is something I wanted them to be the biggest parts because that's something I care a lot about um the venue I want it to be beautiful and the food has to be good and my photographer that is like the one thing that you have physically have forever that you can look back on I feel like so many other vendors that you've spent a lot of money on aren't tangible items that you'll have forever. Like your flowers, they're beautiful, but they only last a day. Um, your DJ, obviously very important, but it's not something you're gonna look back on. Um, so many things like that. But your photographer and your videographer are the two things in your wedding that you're gonna have for your whole life. So I feel like that's a good area to splurge on. Um, obviously you may feel differently everyone's opinion is different but I really want it uh, to get a really good photographer and videographer because that is the one thing that we're gonna have for the rest of our lives to look back on our big day um, and this is the last question and it is how many guests did we invite slash how many guests are we expecting so we invited around 110 to 115 and we're expecting around 80 to 90 um, so it's really not that large of a wedding but it is a perfect size. It's all of our really close family and friends. And it's, I know it's hard to cut it off at some point, but honestly, you just have to. So we invited all of our family and then our close group of friends. And that is where we cut it off. It's really, really hard when you're making that list to pick who is invited and who's not. Um, but at the end of the day, it's very expensive and it's hard, but... I can't, I can't pay for everyone to come, um, so that's where we cut it off, and I think it's a good number for us. Um, I know people have weddings of like two to 300 people, and that just sounds really, really crazy. Um, I don't even know how you'd be able to handle all of that, but our wedding is hopefully gonna be around 90 people, and I think that would be a really, really perfect number. So, that was the last question, and I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I answered some questions that, um, maybe helped you plan your wedding or just for fun to hear to listen to I don't know um, but I really love the wedding planning content and I know you guys really love the wedding planning content so I want to sit down and chat with you guys um, so if you have any other questions make sure you leave them down below I would be so happy to make another video like this for you guys um, the wedding is coming up very soon it's a little over two months away um, like literally two months and a week pretty much so it's coming very close and we still have a lot to do so there's a lot more wedding content coming so if you are interested if you like all the wedding content make sure you subscribe stick around and i will see you guys next time bye guys